All right, so we're taking a look at this problem to start off today because today our theme is going to be about continuity. Now, this graphic, uh, you'll notice I actually wrote down here where you can find it in the textbook as well, just in case you want to be able to look it up later or be able to like draw it at a later time or something like that. Now then, we want to know where it appears to not be continuous. Now, a great way to think about continuity is that if I am drawing this curve, do I ever have to lift my pencil? Notice right there, I'd have to lift my pencil, right? Hence, discontinuity. All right, if I continue from there, I keep going until I'd have to lift my pencil. I have a discontinuity. And so then, as I'm coming along here, do I have to lift my pencil there? Yes. Even though there's a value up here, that doesn't change that fact. So there will still be a discontinuity here. So there are three different discontinuities in this particular graph. Now we just need to figure out how would I describe each of them. Let's first look at x equals 1. How would you just describe what's happening at the, to the graph here at x equals 1? Yeah, it's a hole. And that's okay. This is, we can go ahead and call that a hole in the graph. Now, of course, mathematicians love big, fancy technical terms. So there is a big, fancy technical term that is an alternative to just saying it's a hole. And that is that it is also called a removable discontinuity. That means the same thing as whole, but since they're interchangeable, you should know both terms. It's a removable discontinuity because we're basically saying the graph would be continuous through there, except that we are removing this point. But it is otherwise all the same. All right, let's look at x equals 3 then. How would you describe what's happening at x equals 3? Yeah, the graph looks like it jumps there. And so we could go ahead and call this a jump discontinuity. Big fancy math term? Nah, we're not going to worry about one for this one. There probably is one, but I can't even think of what it is off the top of my head, and it doesn't get used in this particular curriculum, so I'm not going to worry about it, right? And then what about this last one? What about at x equals 5? What kind of discontinuity is that? Well, this, this discontinuity kind of looks familiar, right? It kind of looks like the one that we saw at 1. So could we go ahead and just call this a hole? Does this change the discontinuity at all? No. And so, yes, this would still be considered a hole or a removable discontinuity, if you will. Now, there is one other kind of discontinuity that we didn't see on this particular graph. What's the other thing that might show up in a graph that would mean that it's not continuous? Yep, asymptotes will also come up on these. Uh, now, uh, you had mentioned there, what about a drop? Because like uh, for this first or this middle one here, we jumped up. What if we were going the other way and it went down? We actually still will call that a jump dis or a jump as the discontinuity. I know it's jumping down, but it's still called a jump. It could be worth making note of these three discontinuity types as you will be asked to be able to describe which one is which. And now that we have those down into our notes so that you'll be able to look back at that and remember these three different types, I want us to practice these. So here's a graph, and again, you don't have to copy the graph down now. If you wanted, you could make note of where you could find it in the book in case you want to reference back to that later. But please identify any and all discontinuities in this particular graph and tell me what type each of them is. All right, now as I'm looking at this, again, I can find any discontinuity as a place where I have to pick up my pencil if I were drawing it, right? So as I'm looking through it, I see a discontinuity here at negative 2. You want it 2. I see one at 4, and I see one at 6. Now notice, I did not include negative 4 or 8. 
because although I am lifting up my pencil there, it's only because that's the start or the end of the graph. And so if I'm at the far end, that isn't technically called a discontinuity there, it's just where the graph starts. All right, so we got these four different points along the way. Looks like we got a bunch of jump and an asymptote. And yes, at four, you can go ahead and assume that that is an asymptote. Even though we get, weren't given a dotted line drawn in or anything like that to be able to know absolutely, we can go ahead and assume that it continues behaving as it appears to be behaving as we look up there. All right, now having seen these, uh, there are some technical definitions that go into this as well. And in fact, we deal with these discontinuities at this point because now we've had a chance to talk about limits and limits are actually part of the definition of continuity. And so you're going to be adding this into your notes and then we're going to be using these formal definitions. So go ahead and write them down first, then we'll talk about what you've written down. All right, so you can see we got a formal definition of a function being continuous at a particular number if its limit at that number equals the actual value of the function at that number. Now notice though, that's the general definition of continuity that we've been using so far, but then all of a sudden we got two new ones in there too. It's showing that we can be continuous just from the right, or we can also be continuous just from the left as well. And so there we're using the limits from the right and the limit from the left. But again, in order for it to be continuous from either side, it's that limit still has to be approaching the same value that there actually is at that. And so to practice this, we're going to go back to that very first graph that we looked at at the start of class today. And we saw that there were three discontinuities in this graph. Well now, I want to know, is it continuous from the left at any of those points? Is it continuous from the right at any of those points? Or is it neither at those points? So look at each of those three and please decide if it's left, right, or neither. All right, so for our first one there, at x equals one, uh, the limit from the left is whatever this height is, right? Is that the same as the actual value at that point? Well, notice the open dot. What is the value of f of 1? It doesn't exist, yeah. There is no value there. Now, it's approaching this height, whatever that is, but we don't actually know what that value is of the function there because it's an open dot. It's a hole there. And so because that does not exist, then this one is a neither. All right, at x equals 3 now. What is the value of f of 3? Does that exist? Yes. It's got to be wherever this is, because there I have the closed dot, showing that is the point that's included. So then that means that it could then be actually continuous from the left but only from the left, because the right, notice, it's not approaching the actual value. Only from the left is approaching the actual value. And so, this one is continuous from the left. And then again, for x equals 5. What is the value of f of 5? Well, wherever the dot is, right? Is that the same as what our limit is? No. Because our limit from the left and actually from the right are both approaching that value down there, which is not the actual value of f of 5. And so since neither limit is the same as the actual value, this one is a neither. And again, going back to our other graph that we looked at earlier, uh, please take a look at those four discontinuities that we identified and decide if each of these is continuous from the left from the right, or if it's neither. All right, so for each of these, first up, at negative 2, notice the f of x value is there at the dot. My graph is not approaching that dot from either side. Therefore, that will be neither. 
All right, then I head over to x is 2, and I'm looking to see where's the function value, like what is f of 2? It's going to be down here because that's where I have my closed dots. Now notice that is what I'm approaching as I come in from the right side. So this will be considered continuous from the right. Okay, at x equals 4, here we have our asymptote. What is the actual value at f of 4? There is none because it's an asymptote. It does not exist. Therefore, that's a neither. Because you cannot approach something that doesn't exist. And at x equals 6, first I look for where my function value is, and I see that it's there. And again, I see I'm not approaching that from either side. And so that is also going to be neither. Now, for all of these different sorts of values, then we can see that we have all of these different continuities. And so usually, though, realize these are basically just popping up when we're dealing with these piecewise type functions. If we start jumping into like a regular function, then it will be continuous throughout their normal domain. So like a square root function, it'll be continuous throughout its domain and things like that. So just realize that that will be fairly typical as we go through.